So sometimes on these big builds, you have to do things out of order. And that's just because part A doesn't fit part B unless you happen to have part Z, et cetera, et cetera. And this was the case with the steer smarts, uh, steering parts. So we installed the Yeti XD aluminum tie rod assembly before we even put the Ultimate Dana 60 in the giveaway Gladiator. And that was just so we didn't have those steering knuckles flopping around on us. So let's go back into time and take a look to see how we did that. Okay, for our tie rod assembly, let's unpack it. We've got our locking collars. And this is the aerospace aluminum center bar. And these are our monster one and a half ton tie rod ends. Heat treated alloy steel. These things are burlier than heck. In every box, Steer Smarts does include a card with all the torque specs for their equipment. Now these tie rod ends, they are threaded differently. One is a right hand thread, one is a left hand thread. And that's so you can just spin the center bar and adjust that toe in and out. But we do want to apply some anti-seize to these threads because we're running steel into aluminum. We like to use this nickel anti-seize. And it's like any other anti-seize, it makes a mess. So just pull some out. And goober it on. And make sure you get a good liberal coating. Any that squeezes out on screwing it in, you'll just wipe it off. And just start threading in. Now one quick mention, one quick mention is don't forget to put your locking collars on like, well, I just did. Now, once we got them in, we want to set it at least at a starting point. So for a starting measurement, we're just going to start at about 58 and a half inches. We'll see how close that gets us. And wow, I happen to be lucky today. We're at 58 and a half and 58 and 9 16 inches. So I was feeling it. Now we're gonna snug up just one set of bolts on these collars, just to kind of lock everything in place, but just lightly. We'll have to adjust these collars once we have them on the vehicle and we can see what hits what. Okay, to install these, onto the axle, come right up underneath, and run our nut down. Now Steer Smarts does include these little boots just to protect the rubber boots underneath, so make sure you discard those. These are hard plastic, they won't work. Then we'll use a 21 to tighten up the tie rod nuts. You'll get to the point where the nylock in the nut is so tight that it's just gonna spin the ball. 
So throw a hex key in the top. Oh, that's a we'll use a six millimeter hex key to hold it in place. And then you can turn the nut with a wrench. You may have to adjust these collars, whether it's hitting bracketry or anything else underneath the vehicle. Uh, we'll do that when we get this axle underneath the vehicle. All right, so now that you're caught up, let's take a minute and talk about Steer Smarts. Steer Smarts was founded back in 2015. They're out of the Plymouth, Michigan, right there in the heartland of American automotive parts manufacturing. And it was uh, created by a group of off-road enthusiasts who wanted to bring their years of expertise of working in that American automotive parts manufacturing to the off-road industry and build some really high quality steering components for your Jeep. And well, they did that with great success. Steer Smarts has become the go-to heavy duty steering components company. And of course we carry them here at Northridge 4x4. So let's go ahead and take a look at that track bar and drag link install and get this steering finished up in the giveaway gladiator. Now on to assembly of the massive Steer Smarts track bar assembly. We're going to use that same um, nickel anti seize on the threads. And yes, it just gets everywhere, it makes an absolute mess. Now when it comes to anti C's, a little bit goes a long way, but we still wanna make sure we have enough on the threads to really protect them. Especially if you live in an area with lots of salt on the roads during the winter time. The short end is left-hand thread, so you need to screw it in backwards. Now we're gonna grab our tape measure. And we'd already measured the track bar we pulled out. And it's 33 and three quarters eye to eye. So we wanna match that. And it looks like I'm just a hair short. 33 and three quarter ish. Now that we have our length close, it's ready to go in the Jeep. So slide your track bar up in, connect the top end. And then set your bottom in place. Once we set the Jeep back on the ground, we'll be able to run the bolt into the track bar down on the axle end. Next up is the drag link. And well, we could show you how this one goes together, but Spoiler, it's just like the other two. So now this isn't just a standard uh, Steer Smarts drag link. This is a special Steer Smarts drag link and it's, it is designed for those swapping axles or big axles into a JLJT. So depending on what you're doing with your Jeep, make sure the Steer Smarts that you are ordering is gonna work with your setup. Now once you have your tie rod nuts tight, we can take an eight millimeter socket or wrench. And remove the Zerk fitting. And Steer Smarts includes these nifty little covers and an O-ring. So we're gonna throw the O-ring up in place and then take the cover and then screw our Zerk fitting right back in. Mm -hmm. 
So let's get this thing on the ground. We're gonna show you how to adjust the toe by adjusting the sleeve of the tie rod assembly and how to adjust, how to laterally adjust that axle left and right under the vehicle using the track bar. So the first thing we're gonna do is set the toe and you need a couple straight edges to do that. We're just using some aluminum rectangle tubing. Uh, you can do this with the tires on the vehicle, although it's not gonna be as accurate uh, due to the sidewalls. It's not gonna be as accurate if you just measure from the wheel mounting surfaces and that's what we're gonna do. So we put the straight edges right up against the wheel mounting face on the rotor and we're gonna measure straight across on the front side. Go ahead and go to the outside of the rectangle tubing. And I'm showing just about 73 and an eighth. Now we're gonna to come to the back side. And I'm showing 73 and an eighth. So we're just about perfect side to side, but we want a little bit of toe in. So let's go ahead and let's give that a turn. And 73 and a 16th. So there we have a 16th inch of toe in, which is about perfect. We actually may, after driving this, just tune it in a little bit more. But for right now, this is what we're gonna go with. So as I mentioned before, the track bar, its job is to locate the axle laterally underneath the vehicle. And it needs to make sure that it's, you've got it perfectly square underneath the vehicle. Otherwise, not off to the right, not off to the left, or the, your vehicle's gonna go crab walking down the road. So to measure that out, we are gonna measure, just pick a spot. I like to use this upper coil bucket, this edge right here. And then we're gonna measure over to a spot on the tire tread. Now, it's not gonna be super, super accurate, but it's gonna get us dang close. So right there, I am at 12 and one half inches. Okay, so now I'm over on the other side and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna measure to the same spot on the face of the coil bucket and then I have to find the same spot on the tire tread. So that might mean I have to roll the vehicle forward or back just a little bit to get everything positioned right. And I am at 12 and a quarter inches. So I need to move over about an eighth of an inch. So 12 and a, 12 and a half on this side, 12 and a quarter on this side, I need to split the difference. We're gonna move the, extend the track bar. So that's gonna push the chassis over just a little bit. So now that we have everything set, we have all these little dangly bits here. The clamps, and we've gotta get those locked down. However, now we have to really kinda of look at them and see where can we lock them down and give us the most amount of clearance. So it would be best not to have these hanging down because of off-road obstacles. You wouldn't wanna be clipping this with a rock, so we turn it up. But the question is if we have it up, will it then be hitting other steering components? So on the drag link, I think we can just turn those forward. And that'll give us the most amount of clearance. Get them up and out of the way. On the tie rod assembly, this one could probably go straight up. Or we could just point them forward also. The track bar is the one that's really touchy. I think we're gonna have to make sure. I think this one's gonna have to go pointed forward. And we're gonna try to point them forward on all of them. Uh, track bar is right in up against the upper 
control arm mount, so we gotta be careful that we're not hitting anything. Okay, now that we got those all tight, um, does that mean we're gonna leave them there? Well, no, we have to get it out, steer left, steer right, go out and flex a little bit, get a tire in the air, steer left, steer right, and just see, does everything clear? Make sure all these guys clear, and actually looking at these, I'm probably gonna turn these bolts upside down so it's the bolt heads down below here and the nuts are up top just to protect them a little bit more. So there you have it, steer smart steering components under the giveaway Gladiator. And yeah, they're super beefy, super sexy, and we've got them here at Northridge 4x4. So check that description box down below for links to where you can get a tie rod assembly like this super trick aluminum one or one of their steel ones, a track bar, heavy duty track bar assembly and the heavy duty drag link assembly. And of course we have them for the JK, JL, JT with the factory axles and for uh, aftermarket axles. So until next time, thanks Northridge Nation.